Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to create hollow cylinders just like this one you see in MATLAB and you'll be able to create a whole revolution just like you see here half a revolution like you see here or you can you can choose the fraction of the cylinder that you want so before going to MATLAB I want to first go step by step what the strategy is going to be for writing this code and what the variables are going to represent because this one is not as straightforward as the other geometries first we're going to define the variables then we're going to create a rectangular cross-section and I'm going to explain why a rectangular cross-section then we're going to rotate that cross-section along the axis of the cylinder and this will create the cylinder walls we will create end plates if it's necessary we'll assemble the whole geometry we'll put all these cross-sections together and the end plates and we'll have our final geometry ready for exporting for a hollow cylinder we will need to specify two types of radiuses the inside radius that goes from the axis to the inner wall another radius that goes from the axis to the outer wall these are out we are also going to define the number of cross sections here you can see we're looking at the cross section from the side if you see the cylinder from the side view you can see that the, cross, the rectangular cross section that i was talking about so this we're going to sketch this cross section and then we're going to rotate it 360 degrees now in my case i want the origin to be located at the center of the cylinder that means 0 0.00 and 0 will be at the center and the distance from that center to one end of the cylinder is going to be equal to negative l over 2 and to the other end is going to be l over 2 let's go to MATLAB the first two variables are going to be the radiuses so our out is going to be equal to 1 in this case you can choose whatever you want next variable is going to be the inner radius so it has to be smaller than the outer radius otherwise it's not going to work the total length of the cylinder the revolution which I'm going to explain later what this is for now we just keep it at 360 number of nodes and number of cross sections in some cases you can also define a hollow cylinder by giving the thickness of the wall in our case we don't need that because we have the two radii defined but we can calculate that in the following way so the thickness of the wall would be the outer radius minus the in inner radius which in our case would be 0.2 before moving to the next uh, step in the flowchart, I'm just going to plot the origin. This is a function that we created in one of my older videos that I will leave the link in the description of, of this video. You can see here, I'm calling this plot origin function from this file and it takes four arguments, the X, Y, and Z ranges, which I'm going to do from negative four to four in all of them. And the last argument is going to be the location of the origin. So it's going to be zero, zero, and zero. Let's run this and axis off so there we go we have the plot initialized let's move to creating the rectangular cross section first we're going to create a vector with that we're going to call base which is going to contain the the data for all the points located at the base of the of the rectangle and the base is going to be equal to the bottom base is going to be equal to the top base so we just need to create these ones and the vector is going to go from negative l over 2 all the way to l over 2 and we're going to divide this range in l divided by n nodes okay so we should get if we have specified here 20 then we should get 21 points here so if you were to look at our plot over here the green line y re represents the y-axis and we're going to draw the cross-section along that axis so the base is going to be parallel to the y-axis then the blue one is the c-axis so the rectangle height is going to be in the c direction so going back to powerpoint we're going to start sketching the cross-section from the bottom left corner of the rectangle we're going to move towards the right when we reach here we're going to concatenate or append the vertical portion then we're going to move towards the left until the top uh, left corner and then we're going to come back to the starting point so we're going to start here and our base vector starts from negative l over 2 and goes to l over 2 so what we're going to do is take that base vector then connect it to the y values in this case are going to be l over 2 and then l over 2 again and then we're going to flip the vector so it now starts from l over 2 and moves all the way to negative l over 2 and then we end at negative l over 2 again so the first argument is going to be base which goes from negative l over 2 to l over 2 then we're going to flip using the flip alert function the vector base to ensure that we finish at the same point that we started with we're going to include it here as well base 1 okay now the c vector is just going to be the c coordinates for all the points that we created there 
So then we're going to do the wall thickness times a vector of ones. That is going to be one a col one row times n nodes columns. Then we're going to connect that to t, then zero, and then a vector of zeros with one row and n nodes columns, and then back to t. And finally, the vector for x is just going to be located at the origin, so all the values are going to be zero. So we can create a vector of zeros that's going to be one row and the number of columns is going to be equal to the size of, here it can be either y or z, so I'm going to be using y. And the second one, since we're talking about columns. So plotting this, you can see there's a cross section. Now we, we, the only thing we have to do is shift it up by a, by a distance r equals the inner radius. So since the z-axis is the is the blue line here, that means that we have to shift it in that direction. So basically what we have to do is just add to this vector r in and run this again. Okay, now you can see. So the next section is to rotate that cross section along the cylinder walls for, in our case, 360 degrees. This is when the revolution variable comes into play. If we had here 180, then we would do just half a cylinder. So we're going to determine the angular position for each of these cross sections with a vector called phi. It's going to be lean space because we want them to be equally spaced. It's going to go from zero to ref or 360 in our case. And it's going to be divided in NCS. Then we're going to create a for loop that is going to go through each of the angles in this vector. And it's going to rotate this cross section by that angle. And it's going to store it into a big matrix. Therefore, the for loop, for loop is going to go from i is equal to 1 to ncs. We're going to create a, a temporary uh, vector. I'm just going to call it new, but you can say uh, new cs, let's say. Here we're going to be using the rotation matrix function that we wrote in another video that I'm also going to leave the link in the description of this one. Basically, what it does is we use the three-dimensional rot rotation matrix to rotate all the points in the cross-section uh, around an axis. And here you can see that you have three options, X, Y, and Z. That's basically it. And this function takes two inputs. The first one is the axis. In this case, we want the Y axis, which is the green one. We want to rotate the cross-section around that axis. So Y, and then the angle. And the angle is going to be equal to phi at uh, position I. This is be going to be multiplied times an array containing x, y, and c in column form. To make sure that this works, uh, we can plot all of the cross-sections that are being generated. Here you can see all the cross-sections. So you can basically see the shadow of the of what in the future, in the soon-to-be future, will be the uh, cylinder. It's looking good so far. Now we have to store all these cross-sections into three big arrays, one containing just the x values of each cross-section, the other one for the y, and the other one for the z. And we do that in the following way. So we're going to create a new x, capital X, array, and it's going to store the cross-sections by rows. So each row is going to be one of these cross-sections. It's going to be equal to new cs, going to be the first row of the new uh, cross-section function and then we can do the same thing for y and c. Here we just replace y, c, and here 2 and 3. And having done this we can plot the surface function x, y, and c. Yeah, and we should get the cylinder. There you go, a hollow cylinder. Now, what happens if you don't want the complete revolution of the cylinder, you just want 180 degrees or 270 degrees or another specific angle? What happens if I here I change instead of 360, I do 180? It also works, but you can notice that here at the, at the start and end plates, you have uh, an empty wall and you need to cover that in order to make it a solid. And the way that we're going to do this is the same way that we did for the cylinders and the cones and all of these other geometries. We're going to create a point here in the middle of this, of this rectangle. And we're going to connect it to all the points in the first cross section. And we're going to do the same thing for the last cross section. For this, I am going to create a function at the bottom of this file that is going to output an x, y, and z arrays added these uh, points or these plates. I'm going to call the function getPlates. 
this function is going to take a bunch of variables. For example, it's going to be base, the inner radius, the wall thickness, the revolution, and then x, y, and c. Okay, so let's start writing. First, we're going to create the first plate. And here we need to give the location for that point, for the point that is going to be located in the center of this rectangle. So since the first rectangle is located at uh, parallel to the plane yz, that means that the x value is going to be zero. So the first term is going to be zero. The y value is going to be located halfway between the two ends of the cylinder. In this case, it's going to also be located at zero because the origin is at zero. But what happens if your origin was not located at zero then? You need to accommodate for that and the way that you accommodate for that is to here create a little mathematical expression base end so in our case would be l over 2 plus base 1 or negative l over 2 this is going to give us 0 right and then divided by 2 this whole thing divided by 2 that's going to be our y value and the z value is going to be is going to be the distance from the in the blue line direction so that's going to be the inner radius plus half the thickness of the wall so it's going to be inner radius plus t over 2 okay and i want to make them column vectors so i add semicolons here now for the second plate the one that's going to go at the bottom uh, we don't have to do this thing again we can just rotate the first point from plate one using the rotation matrix so the rotation matrix around the y-axis by the angle of revolution that is going to be multiplied times plate 1. Now we're going to use the RevMath function to make these vectors be the same size as the arrays, x, y and arrays where we're going to feed them into. Otherwise you cannot concatenate the, the arrays, they're going to be different sizes and MATLAB is not going to allow you to do that. So we do this, we tell MATLAB that we're going to repeat the vector plate 1 just one row, the same row, keep it the same in terms of rows, but just repeat the columns, the same uh, number of columns that X has. So whatever X was in this case was, it has 43 columns, then plate one is going to have 43 columns of repeated values. And the same thing for plate two. Now we're going to do the, assemb the geometry assembly part, which we're going to put all of this together inside the same function. We're going to say that plate, the first row, which represents the X values, underneath that, the all the x containing all the cylinder or the cylinder that we did at the beginning and then plate one again with i'm sorry plate two with the first row and here is plate one we do the same thing for y and c just change the row number in both of these cases and also here y and c and we close the function we can call it over here so we can say that if the revolution is not equal to 360 because if it is equal to 360 we don't need to cover the plates because it would be a closed loop then do this calculation so it's going to be x so it's going to be x y and c we call the function get plates and the arguments are going to be the exact same thing here so we copy it and there's that now let's run this to see if it worked or what happened Forgot to add sem semicolon there. Let's check it out. And yeah, it works. Now you have uh, covers. You have plates covering the the walls there. Yeah, it's looking fine. Let's try with another revolution. Let's say 47, a less specific angle. You can see that it still works. Now let's go back to 360 and let's change the origin. Let's say that I, I want the cylinder to start from zero and go all and go all the way to L. So that would be, you can see now that the origin is not located in the center of the cylinder, but it's located at the beginning. If you want to export this, I'm going to use the export STL function that we also wrote in another one of the videos that I'm also going to leave in the description of this one. And that one, you need to name it, let's name it hollow cylinder.stl. You need to add extension then x, y, and c, and then the mode. So this one, we're going to export it in ASCII mode. Let's run this. Here you can see the cylinder. Now let's try with have a cylinder. Here you can see that it's working for a so hollow cylinder or any other value for the revolution that you choose.
So yeah, I hope that this video was helpful to you. I hope that it was straightforward. Otherwise, let me know in the comments where I should improve. If you have better ideas that I should implement in these codes. And yeah, if you have suggestions for other geometries, let me know. And make sure to check the playlist in the descriptions. Maybe there's something that interests you. And yeah, bye.